Psychology has four main goals. One, to describe behavior. Two, to explain behavior. Three, to predict behavior. And finally, to change behavior. But before you can predict behavior and before you can change it, it is important that you be able to explain it. Is it possible for psychology to explain why we do the things that we do? Or why we prefer to uh, make certain decisions as opposed to others? And so in understanding that concept, we we'll focus on the concept of motivation. So what is motivation? To start with, motivation comes from a Latin word, mover. Mover means to move, right? And so motivation means anything that compels, prompts, or energizes an individual to act or behave in a particular way as opposed to another way, right? In order for him to achieve a particular goal. And so when you're talking about motivation, motivation is a very important aspect when it comes to human behavior because provided I give you the right motivation, trust me, you can do anything, <laughs> whether morally upright or morally and upright right and so when you are discussing motivation the first thing we we'll talk about is the idea of the acting forces uh, uh, the acting forces of motivation meaning what are some of the important concepts when you're dealing with motivation one needs right two drives three incentives and then lastly we have uh, motives and so I'll start with motives first and so when you talk about motives Motives are talking about um, aspects or your ability to behave one way as opposed to another, right? The next thing we'll talk about is needs or we'll talk about needs, right? And so when you talk about needs, needs mean exactly what you think they mean, right? <laughs> yeah. So in psychology, we define needs as being wants, right? Things that your body thinks it uh, wants in order for it to survive right and so there are two types of needs so we have biological needs and then we also have social or psychological needs when we talk about biological needs we're referring to needs such as sleep rest food uh you know those are examples of biological needs and then when we talk about social and psychological needs we're talking about things like freedom things like love things like security things like recognition things like achievement those are examples of psychological needs and then the next thing is drives so what do we mean when we say drives so drives are activating forces that result from needs right that's the key thing drives result from needs and so just like uh, we said with needs there are two types of drives we can have biological drives and we can also have psychological drives so the biological drives can include um, the desire to live the desire to drink, uh, the desire to maintain your homeostasis, right? And then psychological drives can in include things like uh, the desire for independence. Um, fear can also be a drive. We can also have our desire for approval or our desire for achievement. And then we also have incentives. So when we talk about incentives, incentives reinforce the drives. Examples are praise, uh, appreciation, uh, rewards these are examples of incentives and so just to make sure you understand what's going on it's um, helpful sometimes to connect these uh, three terms the needs the drives and the incentives and then we'll be able to see how they relate to one another so let me give you an example suppose um, suppose I need food right my need will be food right and then if I need food one thing I'll be able to see is that I will feel hungry, right? If I feel hungry, hunger is my drive. And then the purpose of that drive is to satisfy my need, which is food, right? And then one thing I could see is if I saw food around and then that food had an, uh, let's say it had a pleasant aroma. One thing I would say is that the aroma would serve as an incentive because it would reinforce the drive. And so... The need is food, the drive is hunger, and the incentive is the aroma. And then uh, in order for you to understand this concept, try to come up with uh, the need, drive, and incentive for different situations, and then try to see how they relate to one another. The next thing I'll talk about are some of the theories in relation to motivation. The first theory we'll talk about is the theory called the instinct theory. 
And so in the instinct theory, this one is motivated by the psychoanalytic uh, approach or the psychodynamic uh, approach of Sigmund Freud. And so here there's this belief that we're motivated to do what we do because of these instincts that we have. So we have two instincts. The first instinct is called Eros and the other instinct is called Thanatos, right? So Eros means life, Thanatos means death, meaning we have this natural drive towards, um, when we say Eros, towards uh, positive things like life preservation or reproduction. And then Thanatos, we have this uh, instinctive desire to destroy ourselves and each other, right? And this is the reason why we resort to things like smoking, even though we know smoking is bad. The next theory is the incentive theory. So the incentive theory is um, more um, towards the behavioral approach. And so what we're saying in this theory, we're saying that incentives can reinforce our behavior. So what, are, what am I trying to say? Uh, incentives such as rewards and praise and appreciation can increase the likelihood of an individual behaving in a particular way. And then we also have the drive reduction theory. This one is an important one. So this one is also towards the behavioral uh, approach. And so names under this, um, under this theory are Watson, we also have Skinner, and then we also have Thoman. And so it's based on this idea that um, behavior results from the desire in order to reduce the tension caused by unmet biological needs, such as hunger and thirst. So what am I trying to say? Whenever you are hungry or thirsty, you create um, tension, right? And that tension is caused due to your unmet physiological needs. And then you behave in such a way as to reduce that tension, right? And so you are motivated to behave a particular way uh, by your desire to reduce this tension that's caused by unmet physiological needs, right? And so uh, the last um, theory we can discuss is this important theory called um, Abraham Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so the hierarchy of needs is an important one because uh, you expect to see this one in your exams. And so one thing you need to know is that Abraham Maslow thought that uh, needs could be classified or ranked or placed in a hierarchy. And then he had this idea that you had to satisfy the need at the bottom before you could go to any other need uh, towards the top of the hierarchy. And so what he had is uh, he started off with physiological needs at the bottom. So physiological needs, we include things like hunger, thirst, right? And then we had safety and security needs next. And then we had needs uh, to do with belonging. And then we had... Um, or the ones to do with belonging, we can also call these social needs, things like um, things like love and belonging, right? And then we also have um, self-esteem needs, right? And then at the top of the hierarchy, we had self-actualization, which is the highest level of fulfillment, right? It's um, a situation when one is fulfilled and they feel like they are doing what they're supposed to do. And so Abraham Maslow, uh, agreed that only a few people achieve this uh, level of self-actualization. And so the main idea is that you achieve, uh, you attain a need at the bottom of the hierarchy before you proceed to the next step of the hierarchy. And so um, I also wanted to highlight that um, the first two are called uh, basic needs. So the physiological needs and the safety and security needs are called basic needs. And then the second two which are the love and belonging, and also the self-esteem needs are called psychological needs. And then the last uh, need on top of the triad of the hierarchy is called fulfillment needs. And so in some exam questions, they'll ask you, say, how many layers are there on, uh, on uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs? And the answer they'll expect is three, because they are counting them as being basic needs, psychological needs, and uh, self fulfillment needs. Having done that, that will mark the end of this video.